Hello and welcome to the 14th machine learning and pattern recognition for use with stock and forex algorithmic and automated trading. Where we left off, I was making some of you guys cry probably with all the variables and issues that have already been arisen. But in this video, we're going to continue uh, drudging on now. And what I'd like to do in this video is since we're plotting all of the patterns on the exact same plot, what would be cool is if we plotted those patterns uh outcome right so every pattern um that we and we've done this already so you don't have to worry too much not too much heavy coding now every pattern that we put into storage we also stored the outcome of that pattern so what would be cool is if we plotted the outcome of that pattern right and then you can see visually kind of what is the prediction like where will this line go so uh, that's what we're going to do in this video is we're going to actually plot it out visually to see, you know, where the line is predicted to go. And then obviously eventually backtest. So uh, what we need to do is come down here and in the graph part, you see we have if, um, let's see, path found equals one, then we're going to start graphing. And then we're running through this for loop. So now the next thing that we want to do is each pattern in plot pad array, right, um, that matches. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to, obviously, we're plotting that up, but what else should we do? Well, let's get the outcome, right? So if you remember, um, first what we need to do is do, let's just call this future points. So like the points in the future of these patterns. We want to do pattern array.index, and we want to index each pad. So what we're doing is we're, you know, calling for the index number of the pat in the pattern array because it should match the exact index number of the outcome of that pattern in the uh, outcome array. So now what we need to do are in the performance array. So now what we want to do is not only um, are we plotting uh, the, uh, the patterns, we want to plot the outcomes. So what we're going to do now is underneath, uh, I guess right here, Sorry for the us. I'm like trying to talk and then think ahead of what we want to do. So I guess we'll just put it here. So we'll just do plot scatter. And in theory, uh, keep in mind, this would really be plot probably 55 because it's 20 to 30 in the future. It ends on 30. So in theory, it would be 25. So, or I mean, 25 in the future is so a 55. But we're going to make the X up 35 just so it's not like way off the chart and distorts things. But just understand that this isn't a uh, perfect uh, representation of, of the actual chart, but it, it will give us the idea of the prediction. So anyway, uh, we'll just say 35. And then we're going to say the Y is going to be that performance array, performance array. And oops, where have I gone with my cursor? Performance array. And then we want to say, uh, remember the future points is the index number. So then we just say future points. So that will yield the performance. Subsequently, um, you know what would be cool is if we colored these dots, right? And actually said, you know, color coded it. So green if that prediction was a good one and red if it wasn't. So let's go up here and come down here and do this. And we'll say uh, if, um, I think we, yeah, we can just performance array future points is greater than pat for rec 29, so that last uh, index number, oops, colon. If that is the case, then we'll say p color equals, and we'll make it this green, it's a uh, 24 bc00 is kind of a greenish. And then else, so if that is not the case, so if it's not greater, so if it is greater, then we're, we're, we're predicting a rise. If it is not greater, then we are predicting a fall. Um, you, if you wanted to be perfect, you would have, you know, if it's equal. But the chances of it being equal are so tiny that I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, so we'll make this D40,000. And that'll be kind of a, a, a reddish color. So then we come back down here to this plot that we were making, the scatter plot. And we'll say C for color equals P color. And then we're going to give it an alpha 
of 0.4. And the reason we want to do this is just in case, and actually let's just do it a 0.3. Or I can't even make up my mind. We'll do 0.3 for now and see how that looks. The reason we want to do that is just in case a couple plots are overlapping each other or right on each other, or at least close to each other, um, we'll be able to tell that visually. So if they didn't have an alpha, it would be solid. And so if two plots were almost right over each other, you would miss it. You wouldn't realize that was the case. So for our, our visual help, and since we're making this for a visual representation, it would just help. Now... Uh, I think that's everything we need. Let's run it, see if we made any errors. Bring this over. This is from our last uh, tutorial, so you can ignore that. So I'll just bring this up here. There's our data. And we didn't find anything. So let's continue on. And while we continue on, let me see what we're requiring. Let's change this to a 70. Uh, I think the next one is a pattern. Uh, but we'll change that to 70 just in case. So if this doesn't yield a pattern, uh, I'll run it again. There we go. We did get a pattern. Cool. Okay. So this is what you should have gotten. So here is the pattern in question. And then here are the dots. And keep in mind, this is obviously distorted a little bit. So if we were to just look at the pattern itself. Oh, shoot. Let me try this again. Uh, like that. Right now you kind of understand that, okay, here we are back at the directional. Because when you hit home, it looks like, okay, so this is a flat line pattern. Cool. <laughs> anyway, so we can see the predictions now. And as you can see, some of these dots did indeed overlap each other, right? Like, and you can tell that they've overlapped. Same thing down here. These have overlapped. And then, so it almost gives you the idea of the intensity, right? So cool. So this one, obviously, if you were to do the math, unless there's a whole bunch of red dots right here, uh, if you did the math, it's most likely this is a positive prediction. So uh, so anyways, uh, th now we've plotted out visually at least the prediction. But what would be nice is to plot out reality. So where did this actually go? And then we could also plot out the average prediction as well. So where is the you know average point abouts to be? And where did we actually, where did it actually happen? And then we can see if we want to actually continue on uh, with this strategy. So that's going to conclude video number 14, and this time we just, you know, displayed our predictions. Pretty cool. It's looking good. We've got clearly a positive prediction. Hopefully the outcome is positive. And that's what we're going to be working on in the next few videos, and as well as the uh, true, out true outcome versus the true prediction, and then eventually we'll be actually back testing this stuff to see if it's worth our time and energy to continue, because there are actually some, some more things that I haven't even brought up in the uh, the last video, and I decided I'd leave that. Didn't want to hit you guys with too much too much stuff. So, anyways, that's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.